We're up and running. Okay, let's call the meeting to order. Uh, any minutes or reports received and filed? No. Okay. Liaison reports, upcoming meetings and events. Hmm. Cocon Communities Thursday, maybe. I don't know if we have a July meeting, so I don't think we have that. That's about it. Maybe east side. Go on without me. <clears throat> Got BSNA timesheet training tomorrow. Uh, Salute to America meeting tomorrow at 1130. Salute to America Thursday night live. Um, Salute to America events Friday and Saturday. I think that's about it. At Wednesday, book signing, Cole County at War, new book by Jeremy Amy. Uh, the parade is at 6 p.m. on July 3rd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's all we got. Presentation uh, on 911 uh, upgrades. Mm -hmm. We're going to go ahead and let you guys go first. Can we, can we sit here? Just yeah, let's. Yeah, <laughs> it's a song i think so yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can see i'm alone today so uh i'll do my best uh, thank you for agreeing to meet with us and and hear what we have to say uh, i brought with me captain eric wildy who is our support services commander and was part of the project we're going to talk about and then also I think you all know Bill Betts who's the IT director for for the city so uh, we're here to talk about the 911 telephones and uh, the fact that we knew that we were going to have to replace them at some point in time and that time has arrived and uh, we um, I think last when we had a state-of-the-art 911 center uh, that was about 2002 or 2003 we think 12 or 13 years ago and so we think we did pretty well ringing as much as we possibly could from all those pieces of equipment that we put in that center. But uh, they no longer make the parts to the phone system that we have now. And uh, so we've done quite a bit of work. And I hope that you have uh, the, the information that Captain Wildey put together. In it, you'll see a history of the project beginning about six months ago. And uh, if you look at, I think, page two or three, you'll see who comprised that committee. It was uh, an IT member and three of our supervisors. And uh, I think the process was, was very thorough. Um, certainly, if you have any questions, we'll answer them. But in the end, to make this brief, since you have that information, and Sam suggested that we make it brief, I think, that uh, we are asking, respectfully and humbly, uh, the county to assist us in purchasing that radio s or telephone system. Uh, the total amount is 297488 and so 25%, which is the same rate, and how we arrived at that is the county contributes 25% to our annual operating expenses, and so we applied that same 25% and are asking for help in the amount of $74,000 um, I think it's 74372. Uh, and and um, then I think there was also a question because we had mentioned there was a three pronged, uh, uh, three components to this upgrade. Uh, the second and third are both our radio upgrades and our recording system upgrades. And there was an interest well, if we come back uh, for assistance. On the next two, how much would that be? And we wanted to estimate on the high end. And the high end is 160000 total for both of those. So we feel comfortable in saying we don't think there's any way that we would ask for an additional 40, more than an additional $40,000. So we are th three are here to, to try to answer your questions. I'm not a techno guy, so that's why these two guys are here. So. We'd be happy to answer questions. 
That was really the only question that I had, Roger, was the, what was phase two and three going to cost? And so roughly 160000 So. Yes, sir. It's pretty straightforward. It sounds like it's something that we need to do. Yeah, I, I think so. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't need anything. I talked to Mr. Cole about it prior and went over any questions I had except for the cost for phase two and three. So when do we have to do this? This year, next year? Well, because they don't make parts anymore, we'd like to do it as soon as possible. We, uh, that means this summer, if, if, if we could. Now, I don't know if that affects your assistance in any way as far as when we would need that. That's why, uh, besides being the IT director, I could refer to the finance director, uh, who, <laughs> who happens to be with us today, and uh, I'll, I'll let him answer that. Be nice, Bill. <laughs> Always nice. Uh, I think you know if, if it's something that the, the uh, uh, county could do now, that would be that'd be great. That'd be helpful to the city. Um, obviously, if it's something, I know you're in your middle of your budget year right now, and so uh, if it's something that maybe needs to be planned in the future, we could probably do some kind of an agreement that just says that uh, based on next year's budget, the county would then contribute to the project. But I think from our standpoint at the at the city, from a technical standpoint, we really want to move forward with the project and get it done this summer. Um, we have things in place because it is the 911 system to kind of hold us over if something does go wrong, but we don't want to, we'd rather have full support, have a system that's uh, got maintenance on it and those types of things and not have it be something we're just kind of band-aiding together. So, um, so it'd be up to the uh, commission on how you'd want to proceed there. So. I guess we just need to see if we have it in the budget this year, if we can take it out of contingency, where we take nine, where do we take 911 out of anyway? Some of it comes out of emergency services. There you and are. It's split half. Half of it's from the law enforcement fund. <laughs> What's the matter, John? Take it out of my budget. I think that's something that we just decide. I mean, I think we can take it out of emergency services, sales tax, or we can take it out of GR. I think we probably ought to just go ahead and move ahead. Well, we can sign an agreement saying we're going to pay for that part yeah. of it. We just need to figure out when we're going to yeah. do it and if we need to put it in next year's budget or if we need to figure out where to get it from this year. So I guess that's just technicalities there. So I'm good with it. And I think that's what you're hearing up here is we're all fine with it. Right. So you guys have an agreement that we need to sign? or We can put one together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm certain Drew will be happy to send something <laughs> okay. this way. So, or let us know when you're wanting to pull the trigger. Yeah, and when you'd like to have the money, or when okay. it's going to be completed. Right. So, we can do that. We'll put put an agreement together and just inform you of kind of what our project plan and timeline looks like. I think we're uh, planning to go to the council uh, on Monday, um, this next Monday, to the mayor and the council and and get approval to move forward with the project there as well. So, the city has it. Uh, we kind of had it in our capital improvement budget for several years and just hadn't gotten to this point. So we're kind of there, so. Okay. All right. All right. Good deal. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, one of those good city county cooperative projects. That's right. That's right. There's some hiccups on this one. family. Multifunctional printer consolidation vendor presentation. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're okay. gonna need another cup of coffee. You might. Um, so a few weeks ago, I had forwarded to you guys a summary of the responses we got um, for this consolidation we've been looking at for some time. Um, I also include in that email just sort of an explanation of how I arrived at those numbers and. Uh, that said, we've invited um, the businesses that responded this morning to kind of do brief presentations to you just to talk about uh, their capabilities and what sets them apart from the competition. Um, it'll go in this order, RICO, KOPI, and then Datacom. And with that said, Mitch? Is this the 2015-102 printer multifunction equipment pricing summary? Okay. And there's the detail tab. Thank you. 
Would you say they each got two and a half minutes? <laughs> well, if we get if we could keep it around ten minutes at the at the Absolutely. max. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> okay. We don't have. Any we got a long anything, agenda. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, that or somebody gets to buy lunch. I don't know. Short and sweet and to the point. Well, I want to thank you guys for your time this morning. Um, I'm going to introduce myself. I'm Mitch Rodman. I'm the Central Missouri Sales Manager for Rico USA. This is Matt McNally. He's the account executive for uh, Cole County. And this is Bobby Anderson. He is a Central Missouri uh, service manager. So I got a little bit of information in front of you there. Uh, the main thing, if you could just follow with me, I'm just going to give you the highlights on each page, okay, versus PowerPoint you to death or reading it to you. Uh, the first page there is who is Rico? Uh, we are a worldwide company. Um, our slogan is a global reach with a local touch. Uh, we were founded in 1936. Uh, we're a Fortune 500 company. And we are ISO 9001 quality management certified. Uh, on the next page there, we are what is considered the central region of US, uh, RICO US. We are proud partners with the Kansas City Chiefs. We have 747 sales reps in this region and 1,100 service technicians as well as 200 plus IT resources in the area. On your next page there is an overview of our pricing structure. Uh, what we used what is called the WISCA contract to base our price on. Uh, WISCA stands for the Western States Contracting Alliance. And just to give you a brief overview of what that is, the state of Missouri elected to go with the WISCA contract for their state contract versus going out to bid every few years. They found that the cost of going out to bid was costing the state a lot of money. So they piggybacked off of this contract. And if you see the next page there, all of the highlighted states are all of the states that use this as their purchasing contract for MFPs or multifunction products. Uh, the next couple of pages there are a brief overview of what the WISC contract is and what it entails. Um, the important thing I want you to take away from these two pages here is why choose this contract. Uh, this contract uses more than just pricing structure. Um, it also talks about service plans. Uh, the service plan with WISCA is locked in for five years from the date that you all sign on a piece of equipment, whether it be purchasing or leasing it outright, um, meaning that you will not see annual increases on your service contract. Um, with that, staples are also included in those service contracts. Um, it's not a huge expense, but at the same point, again, when you sign from day one, it'll be the same price every year after that for five years. You scroll through uh, two pages there. Every piece of equipment that we bid also has what is called a power filter on it. Um, the power filter helps with power surges. It helps with lightning strikes. It's also another level of insurance. So if one of your pieces of equipment, let's say the NX gets struck by lightning and blows up a couple pieces of equipment, rather than your all's insurance being responsible for it, the insurance of the power filter company will help assist in that. Um, it also assists in reducing the amount of service calls on the equipment as well. The next two pages there, uh, we're going to show you what the power filters are. Um, for the standard MFP, the walk-up units, the floor models, uh, this is the top one, the next gen PCS. And then the one below that is the desktop solution for all the printers and uh, desktop MFPs that we have bid. The production power filter, uh, none of the equipment that we bid was production. So on the next page there, uh, the current environment. So what you have right now, you've got nine MFPs or multifunction products that are outside of the RICO family, okay? Um, all nine of them are either old enough or late enough into their leases that we can replace them immediately with RICO products and begin a cost savings for the county starting today. Um, you also have nine pieces of equipment that are Lanier and Savin units. Those are part of the RICO family. Um, to put it bluntly, it would be like a Chevy and a GMC. Okay, same piece of equipment, just a different logo. We can take over service on those pieces of equipment, lower your rate of cost per copy on the service, and be able to blanket everything underneath one service contract. Um, you also have 60 HP printers approximately countywide. We are a preferred vendor of HP having a national company, we are a national partner of theirs. We have access to supplies and toner and parts 
so we can cut your cost on those units as well starting the moment you decide to go business do business with us um, you also have approximately 13 printers by Lexmark Xerox or Dell looking at those models we can give you replacement Rico units at no cost other than the service cost to be able to start saving you money on those as well the next page is why do business with Rico um, any uh, copier company or multifunction product company the service department is the backbone of the company okay uh, we have 33 certified service technicians that can assist Cole County should you decide to do business with us the average tenure of each one of those is 23 years and again we are ISO 9001 certified and the last piece of, uh, on this one you know again the global reach with the local touch we are a global company uh, we do have a regional office in st. Louis that has over 500 employees and here in Cole County alone we have 37 residents for, of Cole County that work for Rico so we are local. the last bit here is every piece of security that Rico has to offer uh, if you could just turn to page six this is the one I wanted to cover today. Um, destroy latent data. Our data override security system, uh, what it does is it keeps the equipment, uh, excuse me, the uh, information, um, it overwrites it. So what that's gonna do is gonna keep your all secure information, whether it be social security numbers, addresses, things of that nature, from getting in to the wrong hands. Uh, when equipment is sent back to leasing companies or to warehouses that are wholesaled, sometimes that equipment hangs on to information on there. And that information has been known to get into the wrong hands before for um, identity fraud, things of that nature. Our equipment comes with this security measure so that you will not have to worry about the county's sensitive information getting into the wrong hands once the equipment is upgraded. Do you all have any questions for us? I don't think I have any at this time. I mean, we may have some at a later date, but uh, I appreciate the presentation. Appreciate your all time. I have any right now. Can I ask one question? Yep. Dale? Uh, on printers, what is your life expectancy on your units? On the Rico printers? <laughs> well, on HP primarily. I mean, that's what we're using. We haven't had a tremendous amount of luck with Rico, the mirror stuff, so. Well, that's why we got HP, which seems to be very reliable. Sure. Um, Bobby, would you? Yeah, we, we guarantee, guarantee parts and service for seven years. Okay. okay. And we'll keep it running even if we get the parts after that. Okay. We also have access to a consumer digest site. It's called Buyer's Laboratory. We can do a side-by-side -side comparison for you, so you can see the record right there. Well, like I said, we've had some experience with a lot of different flavors of stuff. And <laughs> we've gotten back to where we started. So. Sure, sure. And we do have access to HPs if you all decided, hey, you know what, we want to stick with HPs on printers. Yeah, we can talk about a negotiated contract on those. Great. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you all. So go ahead and excuse ourselves. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Jen knows how to get a hold of y'all. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, man. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, sure. I'm here all by myself. <laughs> so I didn't bring anybody with me. And I'd like to thank Mitch because he did a great job there. And we are a linear dealer, so it is the same product that we bid. Same machines, different tag on the front, all made by the same manufacturer. Um, for those of you who don't know me, that are here, I think. You all do, but my name is Sherry Wilbers. I'm with KLPI. Um, we are a local company who has been in Cole County for 41 years. Um, we've been an authorized dealer of Lanier since uh, 1992. Our offices are located here, which means that all of our tax money stays here. I'm a big proponent of keeping all of our tax money local. Um, when you call our offices for sales, for a product, uh, you need supplies delivered, you need service, you talk to a local person. We don't put you through an automated system where you're talking to someone in another city or in another state. 
and that person lives, works, and shops here in Jefferson City and in Cole County. Um, since we are local, all of your supply deliveries are made locally. I do know that some of our competitors, the supplies are shipped from out of state and out of other warehouses. We make deliveries every day in town from our local office. Uh, when you call in for service, you get someone local. Um, we have, along with the manufacturer's warranties that are provided, KOPI actually provides an eight-year total satisfaction guarantee. What that means is, as long as your equipment is covered by a maintenance contract, which was bid on this bid, if for some reason we cannot repair the machine in the next eight years, we will replace it for you at no cost. Okay. KOPI has a website. It's available 24-7. That means you can place supply orders and you can place service requests via our website after hours, um, on weekends, whenever, if you'd be in the office working on the weekend and machine would go down. That way we would have it first thing Monday morning. In addition, I also prepared a sample catalog, which I gave Jennifer, uh, that we would provide to all of the county offices. It would be a simplistic look at what we have bid. Um, if you're not in this business, it can get confusing. We would give that to everyone, and then we would send a specialist in to talk with each department at your request. We won't just be sending salespeople to all the departments to try to upgrade all of their equipment. I think that that needs to be done as the county requests it. And then we can individualize the machine for each department's needs. Uh, not everybody, it's not cookie cutter in this business. There's a lot of options available and I think each department needs to buy exactly what they need, not overbuy, not overspend the county's monies. So, as your jobs, stewards of the county's monies, um, it's a tough one. So we think we are a great consultant and we can help you along with this process. I have had 32 years experience in this industry. No comments. <laughs> so You I started when you were five years old, right? <laughs> I like you. <laughs> so I made some key points. Um, call them from an old timer in looking at the bid and the process and what's going on. Some things that I think you need to take into consideration. Not all of the equipment on this bid is in current production. This is something you need to know. Um, also, some models that have been bid on here originally were introduced into the marketplace three to five years ago. If you're going to put out a bid for new equipment, I really believe it should be new. Technology changes rapidly in this industry, as you know. Um, talk to your IT department, ask them about that. So if you're putting in something that is old technology to start with, what's going to happen in three years or five years if you've got it on a, on a lease? It's not going to maybe work with your new computer systems. Something that you need to be aware of and to know about. And if you have any questions on age of equipment or anything like that, I can talk to you about that individually or provide you with that information that we can, we can print out for you. Point number two. Um, I bid some alternate bids, and they are on the sheets that Jennifer provided. Uh, some of those actually fit the specs. The thing about it is when you buy equipment, you may need 11 by 17, another department may not. We can get you a much faster machine at a lower cost if you don't need that size paper. So again, it's not a cookie cutter business, and we need to get what's best for each department and that's what we've been doing in the past on the cooperative procurement pricing. Um, I have guaranteed through the manufacturer special pricing from Lanier that is available um, on the entire line of equipment that Lanier sells. So I can give that special pricing to any piece of equipment that's even not on this bid, okay? Point number three, um, the bid specs that you're looking at, the summary sheet that you're looking at, take into consideration all options on the machines. And not every department's gonna need every option. So when you're looking at your budget numbers and you're looking at all of those, please remember that it may not be that high. They may only need one paper tray and a cabinet, whereas in the summary sheet, a finisher, a stapler, a three-hole punch, a large capacity tray are all added into the numbers you're looking at. So that's gonna be little difficult for you to make a decision on, on what you're looking at. I think maybe some of that needs to be discussed. Um, point number five, 
This was not a formal RFP. Um, I believe your best effort to, is to continue purchasing the way you are right now until you get a really good handle on the models of machines that you have, how many you have in the county, what the volumes are, um, all the costs that you currently have. Uh, when we started this process last September, not a lot was known. Purchasing department did a great job putting the bid together, but as you saw in the email that you received, there was a lot of guesswork involved in it. And I think really you need to get all of your ducks in a row before you make a commitment or a decision. These are just things that I've read into the bid and I think you need to, to consider. Um, I would say to two of our commissioners here, um, would you first cut a board without measuring what you needed? <laughs> Or to Commissioner Bushman, would you let me say I called you and said, I need five Texas for five average size men. Average men or average volumes kind of all weighs out the same. So those, these are things that I think you really need to take into consideration when you're looking at this bid and the numbers. These are big numbers to spend for the county. Um, this is probably not in my best interest to mention this, but nothing says that you also have to award this to a single vendor. You can break it apart. You can break it into categories, segments, printers, and multifunctional units, whatever you want to do. So that would be something that I would urge you to consider. Right now, KOPI has several pieces of equipment in the county, and I thank you for that business. We appreciate it, and we look forward to doing business with you in the future. Do you have any questions? I don't think so. Thank you, Sherry. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks. Hello. Yeah, sorry. I do have PowerPoint, but I promise I'll keep it short. <laughs> <laughs> I won't bore everyone. Just a little bit. <laughs> hey, Melissa, so you put the. Turn on there, and there's the. Sorry. I just won't bore you. <laughs> Steve, you all might want to. <laughs> There, it turns out that it's remote. Like I said, I'm not going to do this. Where's your plug on this? Uh -huh. I think the uh, budget item. What's supposed to work? We've been talking about that for two years. Well, as soon as you say it doesn't work, then it does. <laughs> well, I mean, I think I brought this up every time it doesn't work. I get to have my little fit and. We need to call them and tell them to come back and fix it. We just got that. Can you guys see? Yeah. There's a. Okay. Honestly, unless Josie needs it. Oh, yeah. You can. <laughs> well, thank you all. Um, I'm Josie Weisher. I'm the major accounts manager at Datacom. And Jake Roberts Center is our local account manager for the Jeff City area. So together we work on Cole County. Um, just want to go through some of the key. This doesn't have real high resolution. Oh, sorry. Can you not do that on the yeah. Did you say keep my voice down? No, no. Lucia. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Just you're way too loud. No, trying to get the uh, voice uh, <laughs> down. I don't know how to do that on your on your laptop. But do you know? Change the resolution. I'm sorry. Oh. And if it won't you work, help that's me fine there? too. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Stop yelling at us. Where's your desk? Uh, uh, it's not, 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 Okay, well, I won't hold everyone up while they're working on that. Um, so, some of the things about Datacom, our main thing is we represent... All right. Y'all want me to start your job? You can go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, we do Canon, Concom, and Ulta, and Lexmark. So, in my opinion, you always have, you know, the top tier manufacturers, and between those, any product's going to be good, and what it comes down to is the service side of it. So. When I, I was a major accounts manager for six years at Cannes' fourth largest dealership in Dallas. And when I was looking to move back to my hometown, my biggest thing was going to a good service company, which is why the president there put me in touch with Joe Burke and Ryan Burke here and said that, you know, they have 
great service, great people, and good products, and that's exactly what I wanted. I've been here three years now. I love the company, um, and that's service is our number one thing. So that's really what we stand behind. So why Datacom? We've been in business in Jeff City, as you guys probably know, for over 43 years. Um, we're located just right down the road on Metro Drive. Um, this is our corporate office, but then we do also have six other locations throughout Missouri. So definitely got the scope. Um, we have over 25 local technicians. And then, um, and we take a unified approach to technology. So not just from your copiers to your printers, but also looking at your network or any solutions that we can provide cost tracking capabilities that we'll add on. So that's one of the big things we do in any of our major account environments, go through and see how we can advance what you're currently doing to make it better and not just do a life for like replacement on it. Um, being locally based, when you call in, you don't have 1-800 numbers, which is very nice. So we have local dispatching. And um, yeah, so we have local dispatching and then a warehouse here in Jeff City. We also house over a million dollars in parts. What that means for you guys is that when a machine goes down or needs any service, our techs will be able to be on site with that part. They carry all the major car components in their vehicles, but outside of that, if they don't have it for any reason, we'll have it hot shot to them while they're on site. So that way we're not having them leave, go get a part, or leave, say we have to order in three days and then come back. Um, they're able to fix it on the spot. Am I caught up to you now? Yep, you are. Thanks. Let's see. You are. Um, sorry, I'm. Okay, so over 25 local technicians here. Each one's factory trained, which that's a big deal. So when you go to have technicians go to the factory and get trained, instead of having someone come back and train the technicians themselves, there's always such a loss and gap of what someone learns and if they're certified on the device. So anytime a technician comes to work on any machine, they're going to be certified on it. Otherwise, we will not dispatch them to your place. Um, guaranteed service response time. We do a guaranteed four hour response time and our average response time is less than two hours. I always tell customers though, if it's urgent and you need us there quicker than two hours, just let us know when you call in. It is again a live dispatch, so we're, we try to send everyone out as prompt as we can. If it's something you need us urgently for, our techs will stay after hours and make sure it gets up and running before they leave. Automatic meter read and tracking. This is a really nice system because we are actually able to monitor your machines remotely. So a lot of times before a customer even knows that they have an issue with their copier, our service technicians are calling them saying, we've got an error code, do you need us to dispatch someone? What that means is your uptime is much higher by, with that. Um, and then we're also monitoring it for your uh, usages and then also tracking your toner so we can ship that without you having to call in for it. So we really try to take everything on the copier side off of the customer and put it on us. The billing and the contracts. Um, this I really like about our company too, that we'll customize your billing. So basically at the beginning of anything, we sit down and go through exactly how you want your bill laid out. And then if you want it customized, if the department wants something different on their shipping labels, et cetera, we'll do that. Um, and then we do no return shipping costs if you guys were to do leases on the machines. And then also no long-term service contracts. So if you do do service contracts, it's 30-day cancelable or adjustable. So that way we always make sure we have the right volumes for what you're doing at that time. And then again, a fixed five year cost per copy. So the price that's on the bid is the price it will be for the next five years. It's not gonna increase in any way. And going a little bit more into that, I put together based on that BLI report that Jennifer provided, um, I know you guys have been kind of back and forth on if service contracts are necessary or maybe going and not doing service contracts and just purchasing to owners. So I put this together to just to give you a little comparison based on the BLI pricing is the, uh, the third row there where you see the cost per page based on purchasing toners and that's based on the yield and then the cost that was published on BLI and then I did your monthly cost based on the 43 printers I just did this on one segment the category two ones and gave you a comparison of the service agreement cost per page on the bid um, for each of the three vendors that are here today so you can see the difference between I mean for almost everyone that you saved so much money by doing a service contract on that part of it um, installation training process, one of our big things with any new customer or any new department is sitting down, kind of going through what they want to do for the training, how they want to do the installation. So we'll sit down and go through a schedule like this with each department to make sure we tailor it to whatever best fits their needs. 
quarterly account reviews, again, there's a time for us to be able to go back through and just, you know, revisit your usages, make sure we've got the right fit and make any modifications that we need to. Um, secure print, wireless print, department IDs. These are all ways for cutting down uh, costs for you guys, but being able to do your department IDs, it really helps hold people accountable for what they're doing. So we work with each department to see, do you want department IDs? Do you want any allocations for who can print color, who can print how much? Um, and can set that up for them. And the hard drive wiping and hard drive removal. On your current machines, any of them that you want us to, we'll either wipe them for free or remove your hard drives for free. And then on any of the new ones at the end of the term, we'll wipe those as well. And then here's some additional solutions that we also offer. Um, the cost tracking solutions. Uniflow is a big one that I do in a lot of um, different universities or counties or cities where each department can do some cost tracking for it. So it's automatically generated every month and someone's not having to type up an Excel spreadsheet. It's a really inexpensive solution um, that we'd love to talk with people more about. And then the rest are just some other services that we offer, including the Manage Network, Cloud Brokerage, um, Manage Print Services Program. I know you guys have recently sent out something for the toners, but that's something we'd love to talk about further with the county, trying to look at doing all that together. So. Um, overview on everything. Any questions for me? Just a lot of information, and so. <laughs> Sorry. You know, uh, no, you're fine. And I'll that. send Jennifer a copy of all this so you guys have it. Uh, what, what's your primary equipment source? Canon. Canon. Okay. We do Canon, Konica, Minolta, and Lexmark, but Canon's the primary. Okay, so for printers, though, it'd be Lexmark. Lexmark, yeah. Yeah, I really like Lexmark for the desktop printer segment. I think that they make a great machine for that. Nope, I don't have any questions at this okay. time, so maybe maybe at some point. So okay. anyway. thank, thank you very thank much. You. One more? I don't think, I don't think so. <laughs> GFI is not coming in. No. I okay. I don't have any other presentations. Uh, Hey, Jen, so I got a question for you. I mean, I was just looking over the bid and stuff. And so was the service contract included in the price or? The cost per copy that's on okay. there is included, yes. So the, the cost per copy is the service contract? Yes. Okay. You thought it was what? The cost per copy is the service contract, correct? It is, but those are also based on Volumes that you took that are not actual volumes. Right. That needs to be taken into consideration. Sherry made a couple of points about the items that we bid. Some are no longer in production, some are three to five years old. I couldn't speak so to that. that. In your lap, Dale, since you're more familiar with that. Well, the, the biggest problem, the deal on a standalone unit, uh, if depending on how, how the department's going to use it. If they're going to truly use it as a printer as well as a copier, scanner, whatever they're going to do it with, then we run into the issue, is it going to be compatible with the next version of Windows? <coughs> and we run into a lot of things where old technology, it doesn't support it, you can't use it, you got to replace it. So that would be the biggest thing, and I'm not saying that might happen again for another 17 years, I don't know. But if, you're, if you just got a copier or a scan or whatever, then that's pretty impervious to technology changes. But printers are, you got to, if the PC doesn't print to it, it's not going to work. I mean, that's just kind of the bottom line. And everybody's kind of at, you know, work, you know, you're at the mercy of whatever happens with Microsoft on that case. Uh, but uh, the deal is you don't want to buy old technology if you can avoid it. I mean, that's like anything else. You want to buy the latest and greatest if you can. I mean, you're, you're spending the money buy the new stuff. Mm -hmm. So that would that would be the take on that. But um, the every and I you made a good point about every department has its own requirements. I mean what you know Mary might do out of health is totally different maybe than what Steve's doing over in the clerk's office, you know, as far as what their requirements are on their on their machine. So uh, you don't want to go uh, you know one one size is gonna fit everybody. In Chris's office over here, he's got a printer with four drawers in it. I don't even know if some of these printers support 
four drawers. I know they we buy a Lexmar because it does, and we but we just bought that. It's not very old, so those are the things that kind of bother me. We've replaced a lot of printers in the last two or three years, so they should still have several years left in life, you know, that we don't have to uh, replace them. And it's not uncommon for us to have a 10 year old printer, but, but like I said, those don't really get supported anymore with the operating system. But I've got one down in my office since 1999, <laughs> you know, and it still works. So it's it's those. I don't like just do a wholesale change just to do it. Okay. And then you said that, oh, Sarah mentioned we don't have to award all of it. We can do a cookie cutter deal and pick and choose, correct? That's the way the RFP was written? Yeah, it was an informal bid. So this is off cooperative procurement. Gotcha. These are just the prices that they're able that to too. offer. So yeah, I mean, we can, you can do whatever you see fit. Kind of do it in stages as, you know. I think it was brought up to try to get everything on the same cycle. I think that's what the intent was, wasn't it? Chris, I think you kind of brought it up to see if we could save some money that way. Right, well, I'm just looking at all these service contracts and stuff that we have too, and so, um, you know, I'm not saying the service contracts aren't, uh, aren't there for a reason, but sometimes, you know, sometimes as a consumer, you buy a service contract, and sometimes you don't. Sometimes you take that gamble, so um, anyway. Well, so Mark was a big opponent of service contracts for printers. So I don't know how many years it's been, four, about four years ago, he basically, we just stopped doing it. And, you know, his deal, he just thought it was spending money. For, you know, really, he just thought it'd be cheaper to buy the, the printer, which I didn't agree with, but, you know, we haven't been really bitten by it, you know, but at the same time, we were paying, uh, Altrea, like, I don't know what it was, $100 a year or something per printer. And we had the response time and they come and fixed anything we wanted. That wasn't a, that wasn't a toner replacement or anything. That was physically, there's a defect on the printer and needs to be fixed. It wasn't a supply contract. It was strictly maintenance. <coughs> uh, so we have not had any printer maintenance outside of when we buy from Worldwide Tech, we get three year maintenance. Uh, on, the, on the equipment, and that's it. I mean, we buy that and we don't buy anything unless it's some exceptional reason and the department puts the extra dollars. You know you're going to jinx us. Yeah. I, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, I'll go out and everything's broken. But, uh, but that's kind of where we're at. I mean, uh, but I don't get involved with the multifunction thing because every department's doing their own thing, so I don't know service-wise if they're doing, you know, some kind of monthly fee and you know or per coffee fee i don't know how all those are are lined up well i mean as someone that that looks through the bills thoroughly i mean we got leases in places we got purchases in places we got maintenance contracts and you know right. in, right. in general i don't like maintenance contracts either i mean i I'm sorry, I don't. I don't buy a maintenance contract on my vehicle. If it breaks, I fix it. I pay for it. Um, but you know, I I realize that some of those things are important. And uh, so, anyway, but I mean, if you get in a situation like this, and it's part of the you know part of the overall scheme where you're buying paper, toner, and everything else, you know, it's kind of a all-encompassing deal. You know, I haven't really been part of one of those, so I don't know how it works out again, but, you know, it's obviously it's going to cost some money, but at mm -hmm. the same time, it's kind of not your worry anymore. You make the phone call and somebody else takes care of it, so that's, you know, for me, that's a great thing, but I don't really, I don't go fix printers because I don't have parts, you know. Still have to replace the printer or get it, call somebody to fix it. Right. I mean, I'm not saying that we're going to do anything, but I think this was just something to at least look at and see if it could save the county some money. And, you know, if, uh, if we do a more unified approach, maybe it saves us more money on a maintenance contract, you know, by having more machines under one it vendor. Helps, I mean, it, it helps to standardize because every time we have a different unit, it's handled differently. Uh, we have, like, Maryland's got a Lexmark multifunction copier printer or whatever 
it is totally different than a cannon. It's totally different than a Lanier on how you put this, you know, how you go out and put the people in, the, in there and do scanning and all of it. It's just totally different beast and you have to have somebody come out and, when well, they were having somebody do it and they, he told me how to do it. So now that I know how, it's not a big deal, but it's not like any anything else. It's just totally unique. So from my perspective, it makes it easier if everything was the same, but that's not gonna necessarily solve everybody's problem you know, on, uh, on their end. Okay. It's just something that we need to dig into a little bit more and maybe have another meeting to, for us to go over some of this stuff and then get with you all to maybe well, look at some things one further. One thing I did see on one of the reports was they had the age of printers and stuff. And I haven't been here that long, but I think I replaced about every printer here. And they had some printers there that the age was way, the average age was like 10. Well, that can't be the case because I, you know, they've all been replaced in the last few years. So uh, I, I think that needs to be kind of re-looked at a little bit. I think we're maybe overestimating the age of our equipment and stuff like that too. So uh, I would like to just, you know, if we're going to go forward, just to be sure we know what we're what we really have and you know what we're dealing with. It. We should be able to pull that up with our asset list, shouldn't we? I mean, I would think so. Yeah. Know exactly what we I mean, got. Every, I mean, every. The asset's got a tag on it. it says what year you got it so i mean it's that's about the easiest way i know how to do it you know without okay. having to really do a lot of work just go and say what's your tag number on your printer and say oh okay it's 2010 well it's five years old that's if the printer was less than 500 dollars it won't have a tag uh i think we probably got tags on this but i think it it's still fixed fixed assets. Okay, Cole County Sheriff's Department has lots of printers and has no tags. Because they're less than $500. <laughs> uh -oh. Right now the rule right. is $500. We only tag with um, the It didn't come time. through me, I don't think. Yeah. Probably not. So anything under five has a, a generic tag that only has four digits. So I think we need to here. change the rule for the Sheriff's Department. <laughs> 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 Is that you guys buy stuff for that? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to go the wrong way. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, we got we, lots to think can about. Can we got anything else? We, <laughs> I don't remember seeing any printers on here that were under $500. Though, so <laughs> I don't even know if those pertain to what you all have. These are all $1,400. Uh, Actually, all the, all the HP lasers, black and white lasers, are under. Not by much, but they are under five hundred. I think let's move on. Yeah. I, we got anything else? We got a full agenda here. All right. Sure, thanks. Thank, Thank you. Good Thank points. You Thank you all. very much. You're welcome to stay if you want, but I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> And I forgot to introduce our mayor who's also left, but we do have Tammy Bestian here from Historic City of Jefferson also. Uh, bids and contracts, reapproval of contract for 2015 asphalt overlay here, Mr. Eric. This is just, um, we made it, I had an error. Okay, I missed, that jump. No, you're all right. Yeah. I had an error on the contract amount, Jefferson Asphalt brought it to our attention. Um, it's actually less than what, what y'all signed last month. Yes. We like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. And since they hadn't signed it and we're not anywhere close to starting the project, we just uh, talked to Jill and she recommended just doing a new contract. We could have underrun that one, but uh, she recommended just doing a new contract. So I noticed we, we had that on the agenda before the boom more. <laughs> so would you include your commission on that or what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, just Good old honest engine. So. Uh, we came in a little under with this new yeah. dollar amount, um, so I'd recommend approval of this this new contract in the amount of five hundred four thousand two hundred ninety six dollars and eighty two cents. I move we approve the two thousand fifteen asphalt overlay contract. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Signing a public health emergency preparedness contract. It's over here. Thanks. <laughs> I think I want 
Two signal? Yeah. No, because you're receiving money. Um, you need to have the clerk stop the testing to stay in the That's This was a grant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's from the state. So right. So I move we sign the public health emergency preparedness contract from DHSS. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are rolling. That's right. We are rolling. Uh, Betsy, you're up. Deputy Sheriff Salary <laughs> Supplement. <laughs> we are awarded the grant for the DSSF funds. They approved anybody that makes between 29 and 35000 over 35000 you are not eligible this year. Okay. I move we sign the fifteen sixteen Deputy Sheriff Salary Supplement Fund. Second. All in favor? Aye. We'll keep you signing. <laughs> 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 Approval of the pra appraisal contract. Sorry, I'm, you go I'm, right, I'm you moving go us right, along. You go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> So is this what what property is this on? Menards. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> okay. So how much is it for? Thirty-seven fifty. Okay. Three thousand. It's a full appraisal. It's not. Okay. Three thousand seven hundred fifty. Yeah. Okay. guys want to see this? No. Two copies of the original. Okay. So I move that we sign the contract with Ride Appraisals for Appraisal Services. I'm going to second it. So they're going to have their, their appraisal do it. We have an appraisal do it. And then do we let them two fight it out or do we got to still go to BOE? Usually when Menards is appealed, they haven't showed up to BOE. You know, you don't have they to go you straight. appeal to BOE, but you don't have to show up. Do the value just to tell over it goes to the tax commission. <laughs> so what if we don't get an appraisal done on it? We just uphold the value. And we're, still, we're still going to have to have one when we get to so, the tax commission level. Okay. All right. I was just trying to remember how they... Well, we haven't done them in so before. Down there. I don't remember doing them, but... Or did they go just straight to the tax commission? Most of the time they go straight okay. to the tax commission. Okay. All right, that's why we don't remember talking about it then, probably. Tonight, okay. I got stories and stories about tax revenue. <laughs> <laughs> I got two originals that way. You all okay. can have an original copy, and you can get one of the originals back to me that I can send back to the vendor. Okay. Cup. Got a motion. Your second? Yeah. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, Thank, Thank you, Chris. Chris. Good luck with it. <laughs> okay. 15, yeah. 2015 22 courtroom mics, TVs, and speakers. Uh, my understanding the funds have been transferred, so this is the contract with the entertainer to proceed with the installation. What, what was all this what for? It for in the courtroom, remember the TV and speaker and microphone system? Over in the, in the court. Judge Joyce's. Okay. No. <laughs> when did we do that? Uh, um, oh. The funding was being provided by. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's not our yeah. money. Yeah. Not you. yeah. Okay. <laughs> 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 That's, okay. So we just need to approve the contract. Did Jill see it? Yes. Okay. So who's it with? Entertainment. Okay. Yeah. 
So I move that we approve the approve and sign the contract with the entertainer for the courtroom mics, TVs, and speakers. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We're just moving right along. <laughs> 2015 26 linens and laundering services. Okay, so this is for the EMS laundering services. We only got one bid back this year from Clean, um, it's who we've been using for the last three years. Um, I did put the bids from uh, 2012 on there just so you guys could have kind of a basis for comparison. Um, as you can see, Clean is a lot lower, and then over six years, they're only having less than a 3% increase. I remember our past provider, we had invoices singly coming in at six seven thousand dollars and our spend last year with them was eleven six eighty five so might correct me if i'm wrong but very happy with them and the recommendation is to continue with clean absolutely um, so i don't have a problem with this but i just uh question mike um i mean how how much of the linens and laundering are we doing in-house i mean i know we have the facilities there but as far as any none. okay so this is mainly patient stuff? Okay. So we're doing all our own stuff in-house, but this is all patient stuff. Okay, great. So I move we approve and award and sign the contract with clean for linen and laundering services. You probably just want to award it. We don't have a contract. No. Okay. Oh. So I'll amend my motion and <laughs> I move that we award the contract to clean for linen and laundry services. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 2015-27 Sheriff's Department Fleet Maintenance and Repair. Okay, so we received three bids for this service. Um, Rollins Automotive was the low bid, and that is the recommendation. You can see the numbers for yourself. So as I look at these, I mean, Braun had $11 plus parts, so what is on oil changes I mean just yeah I'm not sure that's how it was bid and then I mean in my eyes Rollins is the clear low bid so I didn't really pursue that further okay. but I know what you're saying and I, I wasn't sure myself the only thing I was concerned with was the 40% uh, markup on the parts for Rollins Automotive mm -hmm. and I called him and asked him and uh, he said that was a mistake uh, so we can get that from him in writing or whatever it, it'll be 10% but I didn't know if you wanted that. Uh, we can get that writing from him if you want to before we start. We were just going to put that on the contract yeah. and then. Yeah. So you'll put 10% on yeah. the contract. Yeah, but it should be awarded based on how they were what submitted. Was sitting right? here as well. Jennifer <laughs> talked to me about it, and I said, you can't go back and amend your bid. Okay. And in this case, it's moot anyway because Rollins is way lower. Mm -hmm. So what we do, and we, this has happened before with the contract where they made a mistake, it is, <clears throat> or rather a bid. When we do the actual contract, the contract will reflect the correct amount. But you have to consider what was submitted to you. But it's lower than the bid amount, so we, right. it's in our favor. So I move we award the Sheriff's Department Fleet Vehicle Maintenance to Rollins Automotive. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, 2015-28 natural gas. Okay, so the theme of the day apparently is one bid. Um, I expected three from this. At the end of the day, we got one. Um, to be honest with you, this is kind of Greek to me. I have it in front of you, uh, what we've been paying in red, and then um, the two options that were offered this year from the same company, from Constellation. I don't know, Chris, do you kind of have more of a grasp on this than I do? <laughs> I, 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 I do. remember that from yeah, the last bid. I do somewhat. Um, so I'm always frustrated when we only get one bid. But so the, that's what I wasn't sure of. The part in red was our current price. 2013 pricing. It's at the top. So the 2013 okay. is in red. And then the 2015 that was offered is in the blue. And then the purple is this year. It's the alternate pricing. And which one were they recommending that we go with? They were recommending uh, the purple. And that's outlined why on the second page. In their opinion, this alternate pricing is the most beneficial option for Cole County. The facility would have 100% tolerance and pay the same contract price for all volumes consumed. It eliminates the risk and exposure to market. Um, 
volatility and therefore the need for over and under normal nominal pricing. Good Lord. Got that out. Got it. So <laughs> Jeff was here. I don't know that he really understood all of this when we went this route. And Sam, I know you weren't mm -hmm. here, but uh, so anyway, this was an opportunity for us to buy direct from the gas suppliers, basically, and to we still pay a transportation fee to Ameren um, to transport the gas, but the savings was substantial, and uh, we have to have metering and stuff on all the the gas meters. Um, but uh, it was. I don't know. Countywide, I think it was $14,000 a year that we saved, roughly. Um, of course, we had to do some some things to get that to get those savings there. But um, um, how how quickly do we need to move on this? I was told that um, because we've already done everything we need to do with Ameren from the previous contract, the term's what, November 1st, so we have a little bit of, of time, and I'll confirm that, but I think we have some time. Okay. Um, so, <clears throat> I guess, how, how are we doing it now? We were buying a fixed amount each. The way we're doing it now, month? yeah, it is in red, and I'm no. not sure if you guys ever locked anything in. I don't know, my involvement kind of ended at the award. So how we did that originally is, <clears throat> and so it gets kind of confusing, so you kind of look at previous year's numbers based on monthly volume of usage, and so you have to kind of give them an amount. So say, I mean, I'm just going to throw out numbers because I don't know what they are, but so say we're going to buy 5,000 decatherms, and that's what this DTH is. It's a decatherm or a unit of, of energy, um, unit of gas, however you want to call it. But we had to give them how much we were going to use. And so when we say we're going to, we're going to buy 5,000 decatherms, well, that's, they're going to break it out and bill us that over 12 months. Well, if we don't use... 5,000 decatherms, then they'll they'll buy it back and, and resell it, but there's a penalty on some of that too. And so when you, that's kind of what they call hedging or whatnot. And so in the past, we've we've done that, and that's, that's how you can save a substantial amount of money, especially in your winter months, um, because you lock in your price, and and then they have their markup that 0.335 per decatherm. So, but or if we go way over to rough winter or something, we may end up costing. Well, you you can more. always buy more. So if you you but know the price is higher. <clears throat> yes, yeah. right. But when you yeah. lock it in, so say, I think what we've done in the past, you lock it in. You you take what your usage is. You, you take 80 percent of it. You buy that. If you buy more. Yeah, you pay a little higher price, but you're still getting your savings on on, on the eighty percent. Um, so, if we've got a little bit of time, I'd like to look at this just a little bit before we, because that's I mean that's a substantial amount, the difference between the blue and the purple, and so um, just to get a little better uh, feel for that, and especially with only together? one bid. Kind of comparing that if it is five thousand, I know you're just picking right. the out of the air, but if we do eighty percent, see what it is. If we go to the full percent, how much we would I can put together save a spreadsheet. Yep. with the purple versus the blue, or if we go way over or way under. So I'll try. I'll see that turns out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, keep it simple. It doesn't have to be crazy. I'm just that's what I'm trying to get my hands around too, which mm -hmm. is a better shot here. Yeah, Chris understood it a hell of a lot more the first time. I'm starting to <laughs> get a hold of it now. That's a little Greek. <laughs> we got to do what? Okay. <laughs> right, yeah, so if we can, if you can maybe get that done and bring it back in a week or two, and then we can make a decision on which way we're going to go. Yeah, and I guess the only thing I would just look at the NYMEX and the Panhandle Eastern because those are going to change, you know what I mean? So I'll try to put something together. I'll bring it back. Well, maybe you can look at that, too, because I know the NYMEX is kind of the 
Well, a lot of them use, and I don't know if Panhandle Eastern, if, if theirs is different. I'd just pick one and use it for <laughs> Well, but in the, in the past, we've always done NYMEX, but I mean, this other one is a Panhandle Eastern index. That could be a whole lot different than the NYMEX, which is more of a average probably over the whole country, I would imagine. I'll say I'll do what I can. <laughs> okay. I'll let you know. <laughs> We're passing the buck. Okay. 2015-30, yeah. <laughs> Lean and Title Search Services. Same story. I was expecting at least three. Called them, talked to them. They'd spoken with Kara. So the day comes and we have one. I don't know. Um, I included the 2011 pricing also. You can see that um, initially the last uh, term or whatever, it was awarded to Midwest Title and Escrow. That's who responded this time. Um, they did go up by $25 for the cost per record. And previously, whereas they charged nothing for updated records, they're now, now charging $150. <coughs> it is what it is. What do we use it for? Uh, Larry Vincent uses them for the property. Yeah. Hmm. So it's just the properties that are going to sale on the courthouse steps? But usually he has to search more because some of them fall off like a few days before. So there's usually quite a large list of properties that he has to actually search on. But if they come in and pay those last couple of days, they fall off the sale. So this attaches to the sale. Right. Oh, so they have to okay. pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Passing it along. I'm just sitting there going, why do we got to pay for that? <laughs> <laughs> so I move we. So I move that we award the lien search and title search to Midwest Title and Escrow. No second. Isn't that on record at the recorder's office, though? The lien? I don't know, but if we go to across the street or to the title place, don't they come back across the street to the recorder's office? So why don't we just go to the recorder's office? The recorder's office charges a fee of a hundred dollars. We not attach in the that to the doing title searches. Huh? Because we're not in the business of doing title searches. So we'll pay somebody else to do them to come over here and ask us to do it for them. I I get what you're what you're after. I mean, but I I would assume that there'd be some liability with us doing that as well. So yeah. um, well, title companies aren't gonna. Larry is not probably gonna appreciate you dumping it. Yeah. Larry. Larry. Ralph. Ralph would do. Well, Larry's office that has. I meant to give it to you, and then kind of what I'm Larry's office goes across the street or to whichever title company, which comes back to us. So that's what I'm not understanding. I mean, that's where title companies, they come to you, right? You yes. say if there's a lien attached to it. The recorder's office is, is by statute, the recorder's office cannot do that search for the public. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I'd have to look at the statute from a bus to see if the collector, if, if the recorder's office can assist the collector. I don't know about I'd be interested to find out. We're not necessarily helping the private sector. We're just trying to get rid of the private or the right. property. We've got to make sure that when we're selling it on the courthouse steps, we've got all the information, which we have right next door, but we're going to pay somebody else to come and get it. Yeah. I think, Jeff, though, they do a little more than that also. I think they research open court cases and make sure that there's nothing that actually <coughs> Okay. Yeah. All right. We better, we better we better be all. We also carry insurance yeah. in case they make errors. Too, yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. How many times do they get sued for that? Well, Never. probably not. Realty, but they don't. You don't. You don't find stuff. If you yeah. have a mechanics lien, you don't necessarily find it on them either. Yeah. So, there's none of them are going to be perfect. You got insurance to have it all right let's move on okay we have <laughs> i'm done we have a second all all in favor aye, aye. okay
unfinished business it's website being difficult aren't you <laughs> website discussion so we were all there for their demo the other day i guess i'm just looking for a direction um i forwarded to you their responses to the few questions we did have the civic ready suite was brought up just to be clear everything that was demoed um, was included in the base package that we were quoted that would be something separate and we're trying to set something up um, for sort of the the parties that would be interested to to view that um, they did outline their fees for online transactions so if, you know if there's any questions or concerns about that and then the last two questions were kind of from Eric and I um, we demoed separately what they offer for purchasing which again is included in the in the pricing that they originally submitted so just kind of looking for a direction to go at this point. So when you say online fees, is that a fee for paying by credit card or whatever? So when we have to use their their. It sounded system. like it was a second party that they used. Yeah, it sounded like they, it doesn't sound like it's, it's a pass through cost to somebody else who actually does the process. It sounds like. Because I know a lot of times it's two and a half percent is usually just uh, a flat they did yeah okay so they say current because they are negotiating lower rates which should be in place in approximately 60 days whatever that means but they are working on on lowering those a bit sounds like so I'll give you my two cents overall I thought it was it was a great side it was very user-friendly I know Larry uh, Ben's had some great comments on it. Um, I think it would be very beneficial to county residents to have a place to go and, and find stuff out. Um, I think it, it helps us to, as a, the county as a whole, to put out some of the services that we offer and some of the things that we do. And then... <clears throat> Also, I, I think it helps all of our offices be more unified in having one provider and one site. Um, so, I mean, as far as we where we go from here, I, I'd like to see us move forward in uh, in uh, contracting with Civic Ready to um, build us a site. So, yeah, I would too. I think that was that was really that was really very impressive. This year or next year's budget? What are we looking at? Well, well, the I talked to them and they said the development time is four to six months. So even if we started today, it would probably be the end of the year before. We're, I mean, you're talking about first of the year to roll it out. So they're gonna want money before they roll it out, though. Oh, yeah, I'm sure they will. <laughs> so we're yeah, gonna I take it out of. But it, this is the only, I, well, I won't say the only thing, but one of the few things that I think every department was here and nobody had a bad thing to say. Yeah. About it, you know? So it seems to me that. I don't disagree with that. I'm just, yeah. and, uh, there's a lot of good stuff, but we got to pay for it. So. Well, yeah, I, I, I mean, I can't answer to the money part of so. it, but they, they kind of split it. I mean, they did offer the four year pay it off thing, too. So I don't like, know if we can do that. Can we do that, Kristen? Can, are we allowed to split the cost of the website over four years? I don't know. If you put in a language that is subject to annual appropriation, I guess you would. And they agree to it. Yeah, <laughs> We're just not going to pay you after year one, but thanks. Yeah. They would have to. We can, we can look into that. Is that something you guys would want to look into further? Or? The upfront, again, was 39000 and then the annual fees of 5850 I'd prefer just to bite the bullet if mm -hmm. we've got the money. That's what I would. Next yeah. year. That's where I'm at, too. That's not... Not. Yeah. So my next question: They had also kind of talked about the mobile app, which was five thousand dollars and then fifteen hundred a year. Remember, this site's mobile app or mobile friendly, I think they called it. So you're talking about a separate app, right? Um, wanted your thoughts on on that if you wanted to go that route or maybe not. I mean, I I like the app. Um, I think that's the wave of the future. I think everybody's, you know, if you have access to the Cole County site at, you know, a finger's touch, I mean, that's that's pretty important, I think, especially when emergencies happen or you just want to be updated. So um, it's a small cost. Um, I'd like to see us move forward right away. 
so that we could have something done by the first of the year or very soon thereafter. So, um, <clears throat> I know so it's kind of an unex. Grand. Yeah, I know it's kind of an unexpected cost, but I think. Some of us gonna come through the IT building and go to each department too, right? I think the sheriff volunteered public works to pay for it. Well, <laughs> 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 yeah. I, I mean, I don't mind going forward with it if we got. The I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, I thought Larry he said. Mentioned, he mentioned. I thought Larry. Authority to move something in the assessment fund. Yeah. Um, I just feel like as the county as a whole, we need to do this on one unified front. And so if other elected officials and we can take some money out of some other funds to take the upfront cost and get it paid, I'm good with that. But I think, I think we, we pay for this out of general revenue or whatever. And we just, we just bite the bullet and we get it done. Who else has their own site already that's paying for it? Well, the clerk has her own site, don't you? Kind of a separate site. I thought you did. Is, is it? Larry, yeah, Larry Vincent does. He's, but I don't know where the, where he pays it or anyway. And Jennifer, even Jennifer's purchasing site, so it's, it's hosted several. I want to say that's like 85 bucks a year or something. Yeah, like super cheap. But. Daddy. So. And You're gonna have to John, keep that yours, domain, though. Yours is uh, yeah. on site. I don't know who's hosting it right now, but the sheriff, the sheriff's is on. You know. So then, if we do this, then their site is gonna be on our site. No, what if they want to keep doing their own site? Then we're not gonna be able to tell them they can't. That's the line at all. We're in support of the. Maybe we just have a, an agreement side. with all with all departments or all office holders that say we all want to do this together we're willing to participate i mean the i think ultimately every department is still going to be responsible for their own content but the look and feel should be consistent amongst all the departments i think they're certainly going to be controlling what goes on their particular part of it i mean they're kind of responsible for what goes there yeah, we need to get together with the different departments and see what their vision is for the website. For different the departments website or different elected officials? I'm not worried about departments. we got a little bit of yeah, there. <laughs> the elected officials. We're migrating to the new um, system because I know, like, um, you know, the Pringles thing is going to I'm not worried about them. They, they, I, they, play, they play nice in the yeah. sandbox. There's some other ones that don't. Are they going to raise the state? It's kind of the odd one is the courts. I don't know really where. I mean, do they belong to us or do they belong to the state? You know, I don't, we, we can do a do link so. to them if we want to do and that. I don't think they'd have a problem with us kind of working with them either because um, they're always sending me things to update. So, they're not the elected officials I'm talking about that yeah. can oh, no, yeah. be a pain sometimes. I don't know why anybody would want to be difficult about this. I thought it was a good. Let me chime in on the, on the recorders. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know who pays for the recorders website now, but I hope nobody. It's, it's very outdated. Would you like to pay for yours? <laughs> it, it needs to be upgraded and updated. Uh, I would I like the idea of the, the county's website and being a part of that. As far as the cost, I mean, I did, if you start, if the recorder's office has to contribute annually for it, then I could just take money out of the one pocket instead of the other. I mean, mm -hmm. don't you have to, if you're going to charge me every year, aren't you going to have to allocate? Some elected officials and departments have their own funding. 
So that's why we do split that cost up on them other departments and don't have slush funds. So the technology so the recorder's office has a technology and that could be applicable. My concern there is if right now you're bringing all everyone in together under one umbrella they can start charging each one uh, will they uh, perhaps leave the umbrella if they're paying for it anyway? that's where i was going with that yeah. rob yeah. Now, not anybody that's sitting in this room right now it's going to be who i'm necessarily talking about okay. well except for you now you sound like you're going a rebellious stage <laughs> these teenagers we can't get it real in I think maybe we just ought to move ahead with it. So, so I'm going to go ahead and move forward. And we'll just <laughs> figure it out enough direction for today. Yep. Yeah. And then if we need to have a sit down with everybody and, and just get them on the same page, we can have a meeting. So you okay with that, Just Jeff? talking about that. You okay with moving it forward? Yeah. Okay. We didn't say we had to pay for it tomorrow or December no. 12th or whenever, so find out what the... Say, probably ought to just get the options from their end on how we can structure the payments out and see what what falls into what we can do. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Thank, Thank you, Jan. Okay. Thank you. New business, second and final reading of budget adjustment number eight. Grab Debbie. Melissa. Debbie. What's her number? 9160. Nope, that's Sheriff. 911. 911. <laughs> okay. Is your number 911? Yeah. I called and you didn't answer. <laughs> I um, move we approve the court order for six thousand nine hundred and twenty six dollars and eighty six cents. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Okay, Mr. Eric, subdivision street acceptance. I got a, several here. Um, the first one, Thayer Road. Um, that was done about a year and a half ago, two years ago. Um, that's the more recent one. The others, um, cleaning out my files and found some that hadn't, uh, the final acceptance had not been processed. And so that's <coughs> the reason why we have so many. Um, if you have any specific questions about any, I'd be happy to entertain those. Um, just to give you a Thayer Road, like I said, that's the most recent. Um, that is the first of these subdivisions that we're going through a more extensive review of the stormwater um, erosion control, sediment control uh, type of things and um, they did a lot of what I would say extra stuff compared to what we're normally used to seeing. I talked to Chris about it uh, yesterday, stormwater in particular. Um, the rest of these, like I said, are more established, um, have been there for a few years. But like I said, today or, or now we're reviewing stormwater, um, the different things that the contractor, the developer has to do to, you know, retain sediment and things like that keep it on their their property and not leaving washing down downstream and affecting somebody downstream and so uh, like I said Thayer Road that's the the more recent and was done uh, I'd say they went above and beyond what would have normally been required and it's turned out good we've had a few um, questions from property owners out there abutting the subdivision um, but we've reviewed those and checked and there's really no issue to, to speak of out there so we've handled everything so I'd recommend approval of these um, subdivision acceptance court orders. Have you heard anything from them out there, the Lisa subdivision lately? I have not. So. No, I talked to the one person at the beginning of the year, and it was more uh, concern of a home builder placing fill in a drainage way. Uh, we went out and looked at it, and the area that they were doing, they hadn't finished. They just kind of pushed the material they were supposed That's to That's fine. I just, so, with all the rain we've had, I've yeah. been pleasantly That's, surprised. I have not had a phone call. I was really expecting one. So it yeah. sounds like they, they, they have gone above and beyond, but we're still getting some issues with it. So it was built right. And like so we, we've, we've watched it all the way through, and um, I don't really have any concerns out there. And 
did an extensive review after the fact and still don't have any concerns. So. Um, just a couple questions. Uh, Merriweather Road out there off Notches Trace, where is that at, actually? Off if you look at well, I know where Notches Trace is. I just I'm not sure where Merriweather is. It's up at the it's a very back top of the hill. It's a little cul-de-sac road. It was built in phases. Is that the up at the very end of it? The very did end. you open up your attachment? Uh, page down I, with that page three. Oh, did it. did he have it on there? Yeah. Oh, okay, I, I didn't got see those either. And then I saw his copy in the page down. So. Is that road going to go through at some point? No, they originally, their preliminary plat, the first one, had that going and connecting to this La Charette. But then they did a replat or revised and submitted a different one to show a cul-de-sac and then another cul-de-sac on the other one. Yeah, so that uh, yeah, that other road has been extended up the hill right there. But yeah, those, those two roads aren't going to connect. Partially, it's yeah. not actually completed. Okay. So we haven't actually we haven't accepted that. Okay. Partial partially built road yet. Because it doesn't have turn around. Yeah, we don't have a turn around, so we haven't accepted any. Okay. And then out at Lakewood, um, just that end section of Lakewood Drive, and then that Tucker Court is that newest right. part that Gary's done down there, yeah. end of that cul de sac. Just the cul de sac side now. Yeah. Right. The other side that he other hasn't developed yet. Yeah. yeah. Okay. He's got part of that road built on that those, those first lots there, but we don't. The way we do it, we do it from intersection to intersection. So we haven't actually done a little piece there, the short okay. 60 foot piece or whatever. Okay, I move we accept the roads as submitted. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All three to get it to exercise on this. Everybody says. Yeah. How about budget discussion on boom mower for public works? I don't like paper. <laughs> Cliff, <coughs> what is well, wrong with you? Yeah. Well, he likes paper. Yeah, I like yeah, paper. Same. Frank Sam will copy and then attach mine to the <laughs> minutes. I would like you got a whole lot more to sign there, but if you look, uh, we've actually got a little on here that we we're looking at purchasing this year. We're a little short in our actual budget part because we're, we're going to actually sell the tractor that we're using now, which should bring about fifteen or twenty thousand. So what we wanted to do is move about $6,500 out of contingency into our budget to pay for it until we sell the other tractor. And that's pretty much all it was, is a, just a discussion on that. And if that was agreeable with you, Debbie said it would be fine or it looked like it would work out with her. So, so once you sell the boom, the old one, then that money will go back into yes. the, the account and then you can go yes. back and put it back into contingency. Yes. So you're actually saving us money because we're going to get more money for the... Right. Yes, we should come in, yeah. So, we're going to use yeah. Tri Purple Way this time. Um, I think we can get a lot more of what we've got when we've traded them in. Um, so we're going to give that a shot. Um, we've been working with them, uh, trying to get something going. Well, he's only going to get, what, six grand, I think, Larry? Had, I think we had figured eight in our budget. Eight, we got eight, in, our eight budget. in the budget, and then they were only offering us six. And so if you go Purple Wave, even if you get. 8100 we're still we, going to be money ahead. Samuel Christopher Okay. Well, we're actually buying purchasing both the mower and the others both coming off uh, Mogai. By doing it this way, we can keep this more or more we have right now in service until we get the new one here and then we can take the equipment off of it, sell the tractor and the mower separately. So, uh, we're just trying to keep that mower uh, running uh, so we don't get behind, you know the other possibility we'd have to sell a tractor first and then we wouldn't have to be here but uh, with the way the grass is growing this year we'd like to keep that more in service. Yeah. <laughs>
So will we have to actually do the budget transfer? I mean, have you spent all this other money already? or yeah, That's all allocated out, yes. yes. We probably will have to do that and move it out of contingency there in order to pay for the boom more and the tractor. Um, but that money will come back after we sell the other one. So we'll probably what we'll do is put the exact same amount back into contingency, and then hopefully the, what was left out of the tractor we can use to put a couple of new dump beds on a couple of dump trucks that need to be that. <laughs> So we'll have to get to that we just want we do want to hit you sideways we want to bring you up to date um, yeah. So. yeah i think y'all get told quite often we don't like surprises so yeah that's <laughs> why we're here yeah <laughs> we just didn't want when you've seen the budget or adjustment when it comes through you at least know ahead of time and not try to explain it to you then we want to move forward on this i'm good let's do it all righty thank fine you with it too. thank you guys for keeping us Thank you. The rest of it. What, John? <laughs> oh, so we still in new business? <laughs> well, we're almost adjourned. Yeah, we're. Yeah. Do yeah, we have anything ahead. else? Well, uh, hey. <laughs> so your generator's on the fritz. So what are we doing about that? What happened was you know, I read the email. It, it uh, over speed. So uh, now it won't start because there's some kind of new generator on it set up to where it won't start. So it won't, it won't uh, hurt the motor. Um, Greg Camp has gotten a hold of Fabic. They will be here this afternoon to take a look at it, get it operational. After it's operational, we need to look at there. doing something for maintenance on it. Uh, like I was telling you, it hasn't been load tested. We need to load test it very well. That could have been something that was found out that there was an issue if we load tested it. It might have told us that there was an issue with it before. Um, and just general things like oil changes and going through the different sensors. It's, I mean, it's a 600, and I can't remember what it is now, 650 kW, so it's a huge generator. And we just need to make sure it's about, I want to say, and I'm guessing this, but I figured 250 to $300,000 to replace it. So we need to make sure that, that uh, we keep it operational and working as best they can. So how often does that actually kick on to every week? That's what ours does too. Yeah, it runs every week for I think two hours. Yeah, okay. we, we actually have a contract on that big one that we have out there where they come in once a year and, and service it and load test it just to. Who do you got? Uh, it's out of Columbia. Cummins? Uh, uh, yes. Cummins? Cummins? We're using Cummins out there out of Columbia. They come, uh, they're actually set up to come uh, every, oh, I can't remember how long. Power, it's power it's power about, power yeah, power. Power. yeah. They come like power. four times a year and actually check the generator out, do some service on it that it might need to actually do a full load on it and make sure that the generator itself is actually functioning in the way it's supposed to be. Yeah, they were down a couple weeks ago and changed the little Lieutenant Pittman's actually getting some uh, figures together and. Uh, he was going to talk to the sheriff and I about it, and we were going to approach you guys with it whenever we get a, an idea on the, on a direction you guys want to go. And then I figured we'd turn it over to, to Jennifer, our jump on their contract, and then they could pay it out of there. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you what, they pick it on public hey, works today. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speaking of that, too, we've never had a contract with the health department here that I know of. They may have. I guess we're taking 911 out of out of the sheriff, so I guess we could take some out of the public works. Wait a minute. Slow down. What do you think about this? They don't call 911. No, don't say that. So, I mean, I think it's. I think it's great that we have these backup generators. I mean, but you know, as as we go forward, you know, I mean, if we have a major catastrophe, I'm not sure that we need to have a physical generator everywhere. Or, you know, I mean, we got a lot of portable generators that Bill has. Um, you know, I mean, what is really essential? I mean, you know, what, what do you guys have that's really essential that you have to have power? Well, the gas. Into it was during the ice storm. You have to have it's pumps for yeah. the gas. We've got to have the pumps for the gas. Right. Work on our equipment. Uh, Doors, lights. Uh, Gerald's got to have 
Our jail I mean, you've got to. One big computer. So it right. needs, and then yeah. all the security electronics is all what we got to have. Well, I mean, you know, we, we all will make do if something drastically happens. But I mean, if we have to have gas, I mean, you know, that's that's an essential, you know. Um, but I mean, I think sometimes we just think that everybody needs a generator and, um, you know, I mean, even generators are going to fail. Even your generator could fail and, you know, and, you know, or a tree falls on it or, or somebody hits it or whatever. And so, you know, there, there has to be that maybe that second or third plan of pulling a generator in and being able to plug it in and then powering some stuff up. The so our stuff's wired now, we could do that. Right. Something will happen to our generator. We've got the, the switches there that were, you know, it, ours is three-phase, so if we have to, you know, mm -hmm. we could probably sideline, you know, just use one phase and bring right. a smaller generator. We did have a small, well, originally before, like, when we were actually losing the, the fuel master system so much, it was pretty easy to tie it all together. Mm -hmm. But now, you can't just actually plug in just the pumps because the pumps are hooked to the computer that's in the other room and that's good tied into the network thing that goes across and into the network. So if all of that's not powered at the same time, the pumps won't work either. You can go to a manual override on them and hopefully keep up with what's going on with it. But there's a, you know, face it, ever since we went to computers, everything is tied together that, that if one part of the thing, building is not working, the rest of the building is either. That's just a, the society we live in today, I guess. Right. Well, I mean, that, you know, that all comes into, you know, getting all these generators. And I know the RPC did a great job of getting these generators, and, and they're all over the place for different regions. So when a disaster hits, hopefully it's not going to happen, you know, over the whole state. But, you know, I mean, with, with, with all these computers, they're great, but when we need essential things, we need to be able to power things up. And I know that, Bill, you're working on a lot of these uh, water towers and stuff, being able to, to pull up and plug in and run the pump so that people have water. I mean, that's an essential service. And so, you know, we, I think we just need to really think about what is essential and, um, you know, I mean, if, if you had to hook up gas pumps, I guarantee you could figure something out. <laughs> or you, or they, or they could be, or they could be gravity because you got them elevated, right? Well, they, 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 no, they, yeah, they have to go through an actual pump. They, won't, they actually at the actual at the tank themselves, they, for safety reasons, they when that pump shuts off, that line shuts off at the tank. There, that's all automatic. That's all. Each thing opens and closes on each one of them for safety reasons that you can't have big fuel spills. Or that you thing. country boys out there can figure something out if the power went out. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Boys are not rednecks, so. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, but so you're going to have it checked out and then you'll yeah, give us an update. We should have, uh, we should have some kind of a, an idea of what's going on with it. Uh, just, just, I think Greg said Fabic was. He's already called Fabi. Yeah, I think Greg said he, yeah. Yeah, he'd already That's said it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then if you're wanting, we talked about this before the meeting, but if, if you're wanting us to look at the uh, Cole County Jail to try to come up with some essentials to be able to hook up, uh, we'd have to get a consulting, somebody to consult yeah. with it. Cause it's, gonna be a big yeah, it's, it's going to be a big, it would be a big deal to do that. You have a generator there now, don't you? Mm -hmm. That's one we're talking That's about. That's what it went down. Oh, it's down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm betting it's a sensor or something. We want high speed. I would think so. I hope so. Huh. Well, I mean, I, I would just think that, you know, we have all these emergency plans and we have all these things, and you, you can't prepare for everything. I mean, there's, there's just no way. But, I mean, you know, if, if that generator does go down when we need it, I mean, that is a problem. So, you know, I mean, and then, then it becomes how do we power it with some portable generators or whatnot? I mean, the guys that's from, that we've had that's coming from Cummings now that actually come out and do that now, most times we call in the two hours he's sitting there. Mm -hmm. so that, they've been very uh, responsive. Very responsive, uh, very knowledgeable about what's state, going on. With the state them. uses them, uh, so there may be a state contract out there. I believe there is. And then, uh, I do uh, our stuff. Before I get my money from the 
Yeah, well, you are all essential, so we can't we can't <laughs> we can't have you down. So. I have, I yeah. have uh, Lieutenant Pittman check on that state yeah. contract too to see if it's so that we may have to put it out at least get us operational, and then uh, once we get operational, then, then start the process of the load checks and making sure that oil is being changed. Okay. Okay. Anything else, Mike? Bill? Tammy? Thank you all. Thank you. Important the 911 deal. I think it's very important for the community. We've had several meetings with them. And yeah. With all the emergency services, so that's something pretty important. Anything else? Will we recess until 4 30? So moved. Sorry, yeah. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, gentlemen and ladies. Where do you want to go? We'll go ahead and go there. You can trust me. I'm coming. Yeah. 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 Yeah.